What's good kings and queens? Hope everyone's week is going well. In response to Devin Haney's tweet stating that Vasil Lomachenko had a privileged career getting these title shots early. So let's make a video around this topic. But before we get to the list, how does one get in a position to have a title shot so early to begin with? One, you gotta have credentials, either in the amateurs, which will be a gold medal in the Olympics, or a highly decorated champion from another combat sport. So decorated Muay Thai champs would actually get into a position fighting for a title far quicker than your average non-decorated amateur boxer. Two. You gotta have an ambitious team with capital that 100% believes you have what it takes to become champion out the gate. If your team or management doesn't believe for a second you have what it takes, then you won't be quickly fighting top 20 ranked opponents upon turning pro. Three, you gotta manage to convince a ranked opponent to risk his spot for a title shot to fight you. Now, this is a hard one because why would a ranked opponent want to fight an unranked guy with less than 10 fights on his boxing record? Usually money talks for a decorated boxer, that's maybe a bit hard. History has repeated itself numerous times and since the average western boxer doesn't think a Muay Thai fighter is, in today's words, a real boxer, they get duped into thinking this is an easy payday and lose. With all that being said, let's start the video. Yoko, who was originally a baseball player, didn't pick up boxing till his teens. He got good and got good quick, raking in a record of 62 wins, 3 losses, and 50 knockouts in the amateur ranks before turning pro at the age of 18. Yoko's first 8 opponents would mostly be on the level of C-grade sparring partners with barely 15 fights on their resume. After 8 fights, Yoko's management was like, yep, our guy's ready. Yoko's opponent was against 25-1 WBA champion Juan Guzman, who was nicknamed the Little George Foreman. Yoko would prove that he was ready and stop little George in the seventh round to become the WBA light flyweight champion. He will make 13 defenses of the title before being dethroned. This title defense record in Japanese boxing is infamous as Marciano's record. Whenever Japanese champs start approaching it, Yoko is immediately bombarded about his thoughts if they can beat it. Many have tried, all have failed. He would have retired immediately after being dethroned with the record of 23-1 and 1 and 15 knockouts at the prime age of 25. Despite Yoko's early retirement, he remained popular throughout the years being a part of Japanese pop culture and inspiring the new generation. Almost 40 years after his retirement, Yoko was finally recognized and inducted into the International Boxing Hall of Fame. I did find it funny, Riddick Bowe's first interaction with Yoko was saying he got hair like me, then followed up with some wholesome interactions on stage. Ray started boxing very late, at the age of 23. While he was in the military, he learned very fast, winning boxing tournaments. Just barely four years practicing boxing, Mercer made the Olympic team and took home gold in the 1988 Olympics. Due to Mercer's gold medal credential proving that, that he has what it takes, he was quickly given top 50 then top 20 ranked competition to where he's fighting for the WBO heavyweight title with the record of 15-0. Boxing critics didn't give Mercer the credit he deserved at the time, but was quick to crown and put untested Tommy Morrison above him, claiming that Mercer lacks the experience. Mercer would shut the critics up, stopping Morrison in the fifth round, making a statement. 
On paper, Nabuo Nashiro had the least impressive amateur record at 38 wins and 19 losses, but boxing old timers would say he had a pro ready style in the amateurs, and Nobuo would make his presence quick at super flyweight. One year in seven fights, Nashiro was ranked number one by the WBA, becoming the 30 and one Martin Castile's mandatory opponent. Martin Castile was ranked number one by Ring Magazine. Nashiro was unranked by them. This fight erupted, becoming a barn burner early, toe to toe action from round two and out. <laughs> Castile would get an awful cut on his eye, and by the 10th round, that the ref, Guillermo Pineda, was forced to wave it off, making Nashiro the WBA Super Flyweight Champion in 8 fights. With Moore's talents and his credentials being part of the tutelage of Emmanuel Stewart's Kronk Gym, Moore was quickly moved to a title shot by his 12th pro bout against number 10 ranked 25 and 4 Ramzi Hassan. Moore will get the fifth round TKO to become champion. He would then make 9 title defenses before moving up to heavyweight, becoming one of the very few light heavyweight champs to win the heavyweight crown. Despite Ioka coming up short in his amateur career, with a record of 95 and 10 with 64 knockouts, he was seen as the most talented coming into the pros in Japan. Ioka would already pick up a national title three months into turning pro. His next fight with the record of 6-0, the 35-0 WBC champion, Ole Dong Sisermachai. Yoka would shock onlookers, dropping the champion in the second round. Then to get him out of there in the fifth round with a picture-perfect body shot to become the WBC strawweight champion. Not even a year as a champion, Yoka is now unifying against WBA champ Akira Yayagashi in a unification for the books. This fight would be one of the most thrilling fights in the weight class's history, Yayagashi finding a way to fight almost blind in both eyes. <laughs> Yoka will win by a razor thin unanimous decision. Two judges scored it 115 113, and one judge had it 115 114. <laughs> Yoka is still fighting to this date. In 2019, he will become Japan's first four division champion. Saha Prom became one of the most decorated Muay Thai champions during the golden age of Muay Thai, which was indefinitely the most dangerous errors of the sport. I cannot find his record, but I'm sure he had well over 100 fights. He'd beaten the best and got beaten by the best in Muay Thai. After fighting absolutely everyone from his era, Saha Prom retired from Muay Thai and went into boxing. <laughs> Oh, 
อย่าต้องระวังนะครับเหลือคนมัดมัดโดนอีกแล้วครับโดนอีกแล้วครับแม่กรรมการประคองศีรษะดีมากเอาละครับอือหือเหลือคนชูกับมัดด้วยความมั่นใจ2นัดในยกเดียวกันครับอย่าล้มนะครับต่อไปอย่าล้มล้มดิเทคนิคเราเอาทันทีเหลือคนเดินเข้าหาล้มไม่ล้มล้มไม่ล้มกรรมการดูแล้วครับล้มไม่ล้มกรรมการมองแล้วครับเหลือคนแม่จะปลุกศอกโดนอีกครับเรียบร้อยครับเทคนิคเราเอา He will pick up the WBC international title, his first pro bout. By his fourth pro bout, he's fighting the 55-5 WBA bantamweight champion Darun Chu Watana. Saha Pram would win by a split decision to become the champion. In Saha Pram's first defense, he would drop tough Ghanaian contender Nana Konandu in the first round before Nana came back in the second round, put away Virapol, getting the TKO victory. Barely two years and 16 fights later, Saha Pram dethrones Japanese great Joichiro Tatsuyoshi in the sixth round. He would then make 14 successful title defenses with a record of 46 and 1 before being dethroned in a big upset against Japanese contender Hozumi Hasegawa by a narrow unanimous decision in what would be a classic 12-round banger. The rematch would pick up exactly how the first fight took off, rather even going into the second half. That would come to a sudden end in the seventh round as Saha Pram was hit by Hasegawa's signature shot, leveling him to the canvas. And one last run to get his belt back, he became the number one ranked contender by the WBC, he went up against Vusi Malinga in the final title elimination match, but came up short, getting stopped in the fourth round. Sahapram would retire two years later with a record of 66 wins, 4 losses, with 46 knockouts. While serving in the United States Marine Corps, Leon Spinks became a well-decorated amateur. To top off his time in the Corps, as well as his amateur boxing career, he will win gold in the 76 Olympics, with the amateur record of 178 wins, 7 losses, and 133 knockouts. Due to Leon's insane amateur credentials, he was quickly moved to be in the position to fight for the undisputed heavyweight title by his 8th pro bout against Muhammad Ali. Spinks, the 10-1 to underdog, would shock the world, defeating Ali to become the undisputed champion by split decision. Ali would go on and win the rematch and make history as the first fighter to regain the heavyweight title three times. Unfortunately, Spinks was unable to recapture the same magic he did earlier in his career and fell short in his final two shots at the world title at heavyweight and cruiserweight. In between all of that, Leon was having numerous fights in Japan and becoming a household name within the wrestling and mixed martial arts industry. 22 wins, 14 losses, and 10 knockouts was his reported record in mixed martial arts. I can only find footage from his wrestling his MMA fights I can't find, and that's pretty much a piece of lost combat sports media. Back with the video in a short bit, be sure to hit that like button and help the rest of the good old subscribers be able to view this video. This video's comment question is, what country you're from and who is the best fighter from your country? This can be outside of boxing, so pretty much all of combat sports. If you're from America, who's the best fighter from your state or city? Leave in the comments. Thanks for sticking around and let's get back to the video.
Kosei in his teens was a standout fighter in the amateurs. Despite not coming home with any international titles, he did enough to earn a Japanese B boxing license from the commission. According to AsianBoxing.info, the B license signifies that this fighter is talented. This type of talent signify this fighter is ready to fight tough competition on their pro debut and on. Which the 18 year old Kosei was up against a 12 and 4 fighter on an 8 fight win streak on his pro debut. He will win by a near shutout. Seven months and two fights later, Kosei is fighting the 18 0 Ryuji Hara for the OPBF title. This is a very important regional belt, declaring you are the best in the Pacific region, earning contender status. Countries outside of America truly value these regional belts because it's a must need credential to being in the mix for a title shot. The now 19 year old would impress many by stopping the undefeated OPBF champ in the 10th round. <laughs> The 19-year-old with the record of 4-0 is fighting for the WBO title against the 24-1 Julian Yadras in his fifth pro bout, barely one year as a pro boxer. Kosei would rise up to the occasion and be a part of history, making it on the small list of teenage world champions in just five fights. Tanaka will win by a unanimous decision. <laughs> Just a year after winning the title, Tanaka would become a two division champ in his eighth pro bout against Moise Fuentes at the age of 21. His first defense was against undefeated 16-0 with 16 knockouts, Puerto Rico's Angel Acosta. This was a make or break fight as this was a name that Westerners recognized, an undefeated big punching contender under Miguel Cotto's promotional banner. Tanaka would put on a show beating Acosta by unanimous decision. <laughs> He would then actually have a tune-up fight, this time in his third weight class, to face his toughest opponent, WBO champ Sho Kimura. Kimura came off a big upset defeating Zhu Ming for the WBO title, foiling his plans to unify against Kazuto Ioka in a super fight. Then and in his next fight, defeating the former WBC ring and lineal flyweight champion Toshiyuki Igarashi in the ninth round. Tanaka fought tooth and nail against Kimura in one of the greatest championship fights in the weight class. He would make history tying Vasil Lomachenko's record as the fastest to become the three division champion, defeating Kimura by a close majority decision. Tanaka didn't stop there. Since he was a WBO super champion at flyweight, he forced Kazuto Ioka to become his immediate mandatory opponent due to those WBO super champ perks. At 15-0, this would be for the history books, for the now 25-year-old as the fastest to become a four-division champion and the second Japanese fighter to ever do it, fighting the first Japanese fighter to ever do it. Despite looking good, in some cases looked to be coming back, Tanaka bit off too much he can chew and Ioka exploited every bad habit he didn't get fixed due to the obvious and was put out in the eighth round. <laughs> Due to the politics in the super flyweight division, currently he has to wait it out. Since he's had four fights and sitting with the record of 19 and 1, the record holder as the fastest to become a four division champion is Oscar De La Hoya, who did it in 24 fights. So I would say he only got one more shot to make history. Watanabe was a good all-around athlete who was originally a talented swimmer. Yeah, swimmer. Jito picked up boxing and after four amateur fights, he was on that Jake Paul level of confidence and was like, yeah, buddy, I'm ready for the big leagues. 
Watanabe will rake in 10 wins and 7 knockouts, 4 opponents on their debut, 3 that were winless, and 2 undefeated guys. And Watanabe was like, yep, I'm ready for that title shot. Well, what are you expecting here? Something bad? Nope. He still lost, but this guy came short from becoming the WBC champ. All three judges had it 142-143, 146-148, and 146-147. Very, very close. After one year and a couple fights later, Jiro got his second crack at the title against WBA champion Rafael Pedroza, who just came off defeating the 53-0 Argentine champion Gustavo Ballas by a split decision. Jiro would win by unanimous decision. He would then make six defenses of the title. Before setting up what should have been an undisputed unification against WBC champion Payao Puntarat, Kosao Galaxy was Jito's mandatory opponent, and the WBA didn't approve of the Payao unification and stripped Jito of the title before his fight with Payao. Jito would win the WBC title by split decision, rematch Payao, stop him in the 11th round, ending their rivalry. and making three defenses before being dethroned by Gilberto Roman. Watanabe will retire right after that fight. As stated many times, the amount of hype for these guys coming to the pros was beyond stupid. The skills from Koki and Daiki match with their personalities, not only from them, but their father as well. They got the entire country talking. So in comparison here, Devin Haney turns pro at 17 years old, a couple months shy of his 18th, and by his 19th, a fight little over a year, he stepped up in competition fighting for the USBA title, an important national belt signifying you're the best prospect out of America. Koki turned pro at 18. By his 7th pro bout, he's fighting the 46-7 former unified champion, Saman Soldat Tarong. Those who don't know him, he TKO'd Humberto Gonzalez in the 1990 Ring Magazine Fight of the Year. Koki passes his test and puts out Saman in the first round, dropping him three times to move forward and fight for the OPBF title, stopping his guy in the third round. By this point, Koki is selling out massive venues, and by the end of the year, he's fighting for the WBA title against Juan Jose Ladetta. Koki wins, but it's controversial. This is discussed in full detail in another video. Watch that if you want more. <laughs> But he has an immediate rematch four months later and wins much more convincingly. Daiki was moved at the exact same pace as his brother. Daiki actually turned pro at 17 years old. By his eighth pro bout, he is fighting 33 0 Vicky Tahumel. By 18 years old, Daiki has cracked the top 15 ranks by the WBC at number 14. Daisuke Naido, after his third fight against the long reigning WBC and lineal champion, Pong Seklek Wongjong Kam, finally dethroning him. This would set up a massive fight against Kameda. And money, clout, and popularity alone got this 18 year old in his 11th pro bout a shot of a lifetime to fight for the WBC and lineal title. And guess what? It went absolutely awful, and let the face-off be the perfect foreshadow to this fight. Oh, 
Naito exploits Daiki's experience. Daiki goes in full meltdown mode. Somehow avoided a DQ. The crowd completely changed sides and started cheering for Naito. The 12th round being an absolute mess. Turning this fight into the worst moment in history of Japanese boxing. Naito wins by a wide margin on the scorecards. Daiki is suspended for a while. His dad is banned for life. Koki faced some disciplinary actions, and the youngest Tomoki just barely avoided any actions himself. And to submit him from receiving such actions, Tomoki was sent off to Mexico to practice and learn boxing there. There really needs to be a documentary on these guys because that was a wild time in boxing. <laughs> Now I've done a full video on this guy years back on his amazing story. Check it out if you want more. Sang Sek Munsurun was a well decorated Muay Thai champion during the golden era. Like with many Muay Thai fighters from that era, finding records is incredibly difficult. I can only estimate he had well over 100 fights in the pros before going to boxing. Moving to boxing and turning pro, he wanted to fight the best. Sang Sek's promotion paid contender Rudy Barrow $20,000 to come to Thailand to face him. Rudy was the WB mandatory for the junior welterweight title. 20000 is a lot of money in 1974, especially for a contender fighting a guy who's virtually unknown. Rudy was duped into thinking that this was an easy payday and he will come back a miracle with a lot of money, then to go back out and fight for the world title just some months later. Rudy came into a rude awakening as he gets knocked out cold just one minute into the first round. On paper, this should make Munksari next in line to fight for the WBC title. The WBC wasn't having it and said no one will fight for the world title, their second pro bout. Since there wasn't a WBC official present, they had a point as they were already skeptical of the legitimacy of Munksari's win. Roman G. Velasquez, the president at that time, stated he will be awarded a title shot if he faces a WBC ranked opponent with WBC officials present. Sainsek had to face number three ranked Leon Furuyama. Leon just came off a razor thin split decision loss against WBC champion Perico Fernandez in his backyard of Spain. The winner will face Perico. Sainsek shocks onlookers and officials once again stopping the two time contender for the first time in his career in the seventh round. Fernandez vs. Mungsuring is on. Sainsek would make history knocking Fernandez out in the eighth round to earn the WBC. BC Junior Welterweight title, becoming the fastest fighter ever to win the world title in three professional bouts. And on top of that, being the heaviest Thai fighter to win a world title. Both records he still holds to this day. Mungsuring would lose the title after a disqualification against Miguel Velasquez, knocking him out just after the bell rung. He would regain the title, knocking Vasquez down four times before being stopped in the second round. Mungsuring successfully defended the title seven times before being dethroned. Takanori was a baseball prospect in high school, and more than likely he was going to play in the big leagues someday. But after watching a Joichiro Tatsuyoshi fight, he was so inspired that he dropped the gloves and the bat and picked up boxing gloves. Takanori did not train for boxing long. As I stated, he was a baseball prospect. He had absolutely no amateur fights, 0-0, zero zero, Jake Paul style, and jumped right into the pros after high school. He will make his pro debut at 17 years old. He excelled and excelled quickly learning on the job, raking up 15 wins and 13 knockouts. By 20 years old, he became a contender for the WBA Super Featherweight title within just barely four years of boxing. He was matched against number three ranked by Ring Magazine, WBA champ Young So Choi. Okay, recap. So this man has no amateur boxing experience, originally a baseball player, has only been boxing for four years or less before getting a title shot against the number three guy in the world. So numerous fighters would say Jake Paul is not a boxer. If he is not considered a boxer, then who is this guy? Because on paper, he has far less experience than Paul. Anyways, Hatakeyama will fight Choi to a draw. 
After defeating undefeated prospect and Japanese national champion Koji Arisawa, the Young So Choi free match is on. The second time is a charm and Takanori will become the WBA Super Featherweight Champion with only 5-ish years of boxing experience. He will get dethroned by Mongolian contender Lakfa Sim. At that, Sim would become Mongolia's first world champion. Hatakeyama would move up to lightweight and defeat number 6 ranked Gilberto Serrano for the WBA lightweight title. Takanori's rival in a previous fight was on his way to stopping Gilberto, but due to a bad cut caused by a punch, Serrano ended up getting the TKA victory over Sakamoto. Since that was Sakamoto's last shot at the world title, and he just came short all due to a cut, Takanori made the honorable decision, if he beats Serrano, to give Sakamoto a title shot. Turning this into Japan's biggest fight to start off the 2000s. In this high intensity build up to this prize fight, you saw the early origins of Ishmael Salas and Rudy Hernandez. This fight exceeding fans' expectations, Sakamoto fighting like a man with nothing to lose, as this is his, literally his final shot, and really bringing it to the young champion. Both guys are absolutely battered by the second half. Takanori is a bit on the fresher side, and he was able to pick up the pieces and crack Sakamoto at the end of the ninth round. He was able to get Sakamoto out of there the following round to successfully defend his WBA title. To start off the 2001 year off, there was an American by the name of Rick Yoshimura. His American birth name was Frederick Roberts. Rick fought pretty much his entire career in Japan, and he'll end up becoming Japan's greatest national champion. I would say he has a record that will never get beaten. This man made 22 consecutive title defenses of the Japanese national title. Rick was ranked number 3 by the WBA, and well, why not? Takanori fights Yoshimura to a draw. He would then get dethroned in his next fight against Julian Lorsi, and he will eventually retire from boxing with the record of 24-2 with 19 knockouts and 3 draws. What an amazing career from a guy with no amateur experience. And on top of that, this is when boxers skip all their side quests. For more installments, be sure to like, share, and if you're new, subscribe. Subscribe to the Patreon for early access and patron back projects. This project being on the tale of Floyd Mayweather versus Ricky Hatton. I'm Ofa Sancho, and I'm out.